Now, it should come as no surprise that one of my favorite TV shows, even though it's over, is Breaking Bad. It is about a high school chemistry teacher, after all. And I'm going to show you a clip from an episode that's early in season one, but I've got to warn you, there is a bit or a lot of blood. Now, it's fake. It's a TV show. But if that does make you queasy or uneasy, I would advise that you might want to fast forward through the next 30 seconds. Otherwise, enjoy. Who's going to clean that up? Okay. Hey, I got a bald cap. I'm going to use it. Anyway, Walt would have us believe, or the series would have us believe, that hydrofluoric acid will eat through not only the enamel of the bathtub, but the steel of the bathtub, the linoleum or porcelain or tile that's in the bathroom floor, as well as any supporting wood structure or joists that they would have in that house. Now. Hydrofluoric acid is an extremely dangerous acid, don't get me wrong. It can cause deep tissue burns, and only a small amount of it is enough to be toxic and poisonous and even deadly uh, to humans, and really anything that's uh, made up of uh, organic tissue. But, does that mean that it's a strong acid? Well, you would probably believe by what you've seen here with the scene and the dangers of hydrofluoric acid that it is. But is it? Well, let's find out. Now, we've already talked about the concept of pH, and quite often when people talk about acids, they talk about a couple of things. They talk about pH, that is, how low is the pH, and therefore how concentrated is the hydrogen ion concentration, and ultimately how acidic is that solution. They can also talk about concentration, that is, the more concentrated the acid typically tends to denote the strength of the acid. But, neither one of those things are exactly accurate, as we're going to discuss. In fact, the true measure of how acidic an acid is, is the degree to which it ionizes. And really all that means to us is how many hydrogen ions does it form from the acidic molecule. So a strong acid has what we refer to as a really high Ka, that is an acid ionization constant, which we'll discuss a little bit in just a second. But really what it refers to is what percentage of the acidic molecules actually form hydrogen ions in solution. That is, the greater the percentage of those ions that form, or the greater percentage of those molecules that form the hydrogen ions and ultimately hydronium ions in solution, the stronger the acid. So if this acid, when it's put in water, ionizes almost completely, we say that it's a strong acid, and we classify it as a strong acid. In fact, strong acids are classified as having 95% or greater ionization. That means that 95 out of 100 acid molecules will form hydrogen ions or hydronium ions in solution. Quite often, it's even greater than that. The remaining 5% will stay as acidic acids uh, molecules in water. So for example, hydrochloric acid, most of it would turn into hydrogen ions and ultimately hydronium ions, and very few of them would stay as HCl or hydrogen chloride molecules in solution. So really when we go about calculating pH, as we've done to this point for strong acids, we can use the acid concentration to represent the hydronium ion or hydrogen ion concentration because effectively they ionize to such an extent that it's more or less one-to-one -one between the acidic molecules and the hydrogen ions or hydronium ions that they form. Weak acids, on the other hand, have a very low Ka because they have a very low percentage of ionization. That is, most of a weak acid will dissolve in water and remain as acidic molecules in solution. Very few of those acidic molecules will ionize or form hydronium or hydrogen ions in solution. And if we look at this sort of scenario, this is where an equilibrium comes in when we start talking about acids. True, there will be some equilibrium when we deal with strong acids, but it's much more prevalent when we deal with weak acids. 
so that very few of these acidic molecules will ionize into hydronium ions and some other anion, but that anion and the hydronium ions will also, in the other way, reform the acid so that we have this equilibrium. And what we have to understand now is it's not as simple as taking the concentration of the acid and plugging it into the pH equation. This is where we have to use our ice tables and our equilibrium calculations and use something that we call the Ka or acid ionization constant that I've mentioned earlier. And if we take a look at an equilibrium scenario in which we have an acid reacting in the presence of water or being solvated by water potentially to form hydronium ions and uh, some other anion, we can generate a Kc expression or a general equilibrium expression for this. But water, being a pure substance, has uh, a concentration that's effectively constant, plus we have a really large volume of water in any of these scenarios. And we can effectively eliminate it, or we say that it's included in that uh, constant. So what that allows us to generate is this Ka expression, in which we have the concentration of the hydronium ion, the anion, the products of this ionization, and we have the concentration of the acid in the denominator. And so what that allows us to do then is figure out the concentration of the hydronium ion using the Ka, using our ice tables, and trying to establish the concentration of the hydronium ion for use in, say, pH calculations. So it is a little more involved, or you could say a lot more involved, in going through and calculating these values to establish pH for a weak acid than it is for a strong acid. But that has to do with the nature of a strong acid versus a weak acid. Almost all of the acidic molecules are going to ionize to form hydronium ions in a strong acid, but very few of them are going to do so in a weak acid. So the way in which we generate the hydronium ion for, say, pH calculations is going to be different and is going to be more involved. But you might be asking, well, how do we identify acids based on their formula? That is, how do I know something's a strong acid versus a weak acid? Well, one way you can go about checking it out is to look at your Ka values, but there are some general rules in terms of identifying them based on their formula. Strong acids are generally any of those acidic halides except hydrogen fluoride. There it is, gave it away. Even though it could potentially eat through a body and a bathtub and enamel and all that jazz, hydrofluoric acid is still classified as a weak acid. But the other acidic halides are strong acids. They ionize almost completely. And any oxy acid, that is an acid that contains uh, oxygen, is considered a strong acid if the difference between the acidic hydrogens and oxygens is greater than one. That is, it's two or more. So if we take a look at, say, uh, sulfuric acid, you will notice that sulfuric acid has two acidic hydrogens and four oxygens. So the difference is greater than one. It's two. In terms of weak acids, that's just generally everything else. In fact, most acids are weak acids. We think about lactic acid and citric acid and ascorbic acid. Almost all other types of acids we would classify as, or as weak acids. So all other acids, that is acids that aren't strong acids, are obviously weak. Yeah, what is it about the formula that makes it a strong acid versus a weak acid? Okay, I didn't know we were taking questions here, but that is a good one, guy who looks an awful lot like me. The reason that we have some acids being strong versus other acids being weak have to do with that hydrogen ion. Remember, hydrogen ions are really what give acids their characteristic properties. And if the attractive force of the hydrogen ion is stronger for the anion, it will stay together in that molecule. But if the water has a stronger attractive force for the hydrogen than the anion does, then it's more likely to be solvated or pulled apart by water and become aqueous in the solution and give it its acidic properties. So really, it just has to do with the attractive force of that hydrogen ion for the anion. Does that help, guy who looks like me? Actually, I... So the last thing that I want to talk about is this idea of pH and concentration in dealing with acid strength. And if you think about it, we can have a scenario where we have a very concentrated weak acid and a very dilute strong acid, and we're going to have scenarios in which this very concentrated weak acid will actually have a lower pH and a higher hydrogen ion concentration than will the dilute strong acid. 
So in that scenario, we would actually have a weak acid that's got a lower pH than does the strong acid. So again, sort of hammering home that point, hopefully, that it doesn't necessarily have to do with pH or hydrogen ion concentration that deals with the strength of an acid. It's the nature of the acid itself that gives it its strength. Okay, back to our Breaking Bad scenario. Well, even though hydrofluoric acid isn't considered a strong acid, and even though it's not likely going to eat through that entire body, the enamel in the bathtub, the metal of the bathtub, the, and all the flooring and tile in between, uh, it still is a pretty dangerous acid. And while a lot of the chemistry on that show is really, really good, maybe this one is just a little bit questionable. But hey, it did make for good watching. Speaking of which, thanks for watching this. So if you're looking to watch this video again, or if you're looking for some additional videos on some of the chemistry topics you've been covering in class, take a look at our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.